She earned herself the nickname Vinegar Lil for her withering criticisms and steadfast adherence to firm principle. She was, as Betty Boothroyd described her, a debunker of humbug. Today, politicians of all hues have paid tribute to a formidable parliamentarian and longtime chair of the Transport Select Committee, Gwyneth Dunwoody. I long ago gave up expecting answers from, well, from government departments. Life is difficult, Prime Minister. Yes. Someone in rail track, Mr Corbett, must take responsibility for something. She was a battle axe, her words, rather than Batman. But all the same, there was a little of the caped crusader about Gwyneth Dunwoody. Trouser suited, anyway. Like her husband, she was elected to Parliament in the Labour interest in the 60s. There was a flash of the Dunwoody steel in one of her early interviews, as well as some formidable millinery. I think I've done all the sort of groundwork first, you know, delivering leaflets and writing up and uh, making tea and buns. I, I think you've got to start that way before you can move on into the other realms. If I remember rightly, you were thrown out in the early days. Of the <laughs> party, I was you? not thrown out. Mrs. Dunwoody once complained that husbands didn't give their wives flowers often enough. The next day, florists queued at the commons with bouquets for her. There were more today. She was a signpost and not a weathercock. The signpost points the way and says, this is the way you should go. You don't have to agree with it, but if you come back in 10 years, the signpost is there. The weathercock, always studying the opinion polls and the focus groups and the spin dogs. I've no time for weathercocks and, and Gwyneth is a signpost. Mrs Dunwoody was the longest serving woman MP, but she was best known as a kind of Norman hunter of politics biting the legs of ministers, even if they were nominally on her side. What we do on the select committees matters. It matters because the House of Commons must never become a great morass of people doing what they are told, not by the electorate, but by the executive. She chaired the Transport Select Committee, despite efforts by new Labour grandees to kick her off it. I think it's uh, really a bit sad. They've got a very large majority, they're totally in control, their opposition is in disarray, and yet they can't afford to have people asking awkward questions. It tells you more about them, I think. I described her as um, being the secret love child of Leonard Brezhnev and Ina Sharples. And um, I thought she might take offence at this, but in fact, um, she loved it and was extraordinarily nice to me ever since. I'll miss her. She was a real character. She had a marvellous voice, too. She was very unpackaged. Uh, she was very unformulaic. And this voice, like, a, like the creak on a coffin, I once described it. But there is no easy way of dealing with this. Life is difficult, Prime Minister. Yeah. You have differentiated between the two different... Uh, Thank you for acknowledging that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was what you were paying for. Forgive well. me. Tributes there to Gwyneth Dunwoody.